How's everyone doing? Uh, thanks for joining me in the garage today. Um, the project we have on the go is this Craftsman push mower and uh, it has multiple problems. So let's go through them and decide whether or not this is a candidate for uh, a refurb or we just part this one out. So once again guys, thanks for uh, joining me on my small engine repair channel. We got this uh, free mower I picked up yesterday and uh, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, I had sold the guy I used mower last year and uh, then he had this one to donate to me this spring. And uh, I have gone through it a little bit so I know that there is some issues and we'll go through those. I'll talk you through those. So anytime I'm looking through a new mower, first thing I want to do is check the oil. And that's problem number one. A, it's pretty dirty, but B, look how much past, I don't know if you can see, past the full mark that is, it's probably got twice as much oil as it needs. So hence, you're going to see with with that, and this is the second mower already in a matter of uh, a couple days that I've had that has come to me with too much oil in it. But take a look at the status or the, the state of this thing. Look how disgusting and dirty it is. And that, guys, is a byproduct of overfilling the oil. Now this right here, because it's right around the oil dipstick, this might be another problem. There and you can see it's kind of it's kind of a bit loose there's a, a like a little uh, bolt up here holding it so that might be missing i don't know yet but also there is a uh, gasket uh, or washer like a rubber gasket o-ring i should say right here so So the next issue I noticed is while I was running it, there was some exhaust and smoke coming from behind here in between the muffler and the engine block. And it's a little bit hot still, but that would be why. So I don't know if uh, these are just loose. I think one of these is probably broken off. So that's problem number two. Let's see if we can keep counting these up. Problem three, which would be an easy one, is it looks like there's a whole bunch of grass and crap, maybe a mouse nest or something up and underneath here. But that's pretty easy. I just take this cover off and clean all that out. That's not a big deal. It wouldn't cost any money. Um, problem number four is uh, this little handle is broken and there's just a nut bolt on this side so that's kind of unprofessional so i probably have to address that which i have that so what are we up to now four uh, number five so far i've noticed there's a loose wheel on the front i do have a little bit of a trick for that which wouldn't cost me much money, a few cents. Uh, so that's number five. Let's see, number six. And guys, this is just the stuff I've noticed so far. <laughs> Take a look at that. Oil filled, oil soaked, because they overfilled it. <laughs> and it's just ridiculously dirty. So that would obviously be a replacement. So what's that, number six? Number seven, we're missing a hubcap. That's not that big of a deal, but when you're reselling stuff, you're gonna wanna fix that up. I might have a hubcap for that. Uh, set seven, number eight. I don't know what's going on here, but I assume that this gas tank, um, the uh, threads on it are wrecked. I'll have to get into that, so that's number eight eight and uh i think that's oh no there is one more let me see if i can get you under here uh, all right number nine is this blade is bent 
I'm going to undo the spark plug here so that I can spin this guy around. Not only is it bent, but look at the end of it trashed. Okay. So take a look here. Okay, you can see it comes out past and here it's not out past the edge here. So it's bl the blade is bent and it's just trashed. So, I mean, what's that? Nine or 10 issues with this thing, guys. Um, so uh, what I want is uh, your guys' opinion. You think this would be the candidate for a refurbishment and try and resell or just uh, part it out? Let me know in the comments below what you think of this guy. All right, so I am a bit of a glutton for punishment, so I am going to start seeing how bad some of this stuff is. First thing I'm going to do is see if I have a replacement uh, blade for the bottom side, because I'm not going to buy parts for this, guys. I have a sort of a um, collection of used parts that uh, I get from stuff like this that I just part out. So if I don't have some of these parts that need replacing, I'll just probably scrap this out for the good parts. So, get my, uh, get this blade off first, see if I have a replacement. And because it's overfilled with oil, I don't want to spill oil all over the place in the case, so I'll flip it back over. Okay, so I found us a blade. It's not quite as wide or as the other one, but it's the same length and the same uh, hole, center hole pattern. So I'm going to uh, go with something like that. The next thing I'm going to try and see about is this gas tank. I do have some spare gas tanks if the uh, th threads are messed up on this thing. Uh, or maybe it's just the wrong gas cap altogether. Because, I mean, that's that's too big of a gas cap. So I got a bunch of gas caps. Let's see if I can find one of those. Okay, so I found me a replacement gas cap. That should fit. And there we go. Yes, it does. Okay, so we got that. Let's see, parts-wise. Okay, we got to take a look at this muffler next. See what's going on here. And uh, all I'm hoping for is, is that this the bolts are not stripped out because that's a pain in the butt to, to uh, fix. So I'm going to take this muffler off and see what we're dealing with there next. Alright, and I always try and recommend at least getting these bolts started with a socket and a ratchet. Okay, that one's extremely loose. Let me see if I can't tighten it down. Okay, so I can tighten it. And we might get lucky. It might just be loose. That's it. But, you know what? Just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off all the way. I think that's just our problem, but these little retainer clip, when you fold that over, that's supposed to prevent it from getting loose, becoming loose like that, so just want to double check. I think that's probably our issue. Everything looks really good there, no problems. Uh, there is a, a lot of junk here, a lot of oil residue. So while I got this off, I might as well try and clean this up a bit. But I think that was our issue with that. I just had some blow by exhaust coming out there. So, uh, and I think it was smoking because uh, this thing's overfilled. So I'll clean this up a bit and I'll come back. 
All right, so I got that cleaned up and the uh, muffler back on. And um, so thus far, I haven't found anything that is gonna prevent me from continuing on with this thing um, since I had all the sort of the replacement parts. So I'm gonna keep going with this thing. I'm gonna put it up on my uh, lawnmower lift and uh, we'll continue diving into this thing. All right, so before I get you up on the lift, uh, what I did was um, turned it over, I flipped over on the side here, and just drained out all the oil, and I can tell by how much this is being filled up that it uh, was confirming that it's it's been way overfilled. Okay, so, uh, and then while I have it up on its side, what I did was just scraped off all of these uh, grass cakes off the bottom, and uh, that's quite a bit of built up grass. And that's what rusts out the bottom of your deck, guys. So once a year, or a couple times a year, I would recommend actually, uh, just flip this thing over, you know, um, take the spark plug wire off and then uh, move your blade as necessary and just scrape this stuff up. Now, when you do flip it over, guys, please flip over the carburetor side up. Otherwise, um, you're going to potentially get oil backfilling through the... Uh, combustion chamber and through the uh, carburetor and into your air filter okay so there is a proper way to flip this thing over all right so i got you up on my left here next thing i'm going to do is get into the meat potatoes here Let's see what's going on in here so far so good I'm going to get this gas tank off next. We've got three five sixteenths up top. And then there is right up and under here. There's a three eighths. Okay. And then there's usually a little plastic spacer between the tank and the block, like that guy. Take that off, and then your fuel tank come off. Of course, you're gonna have to detach it from the carburetor on this end. So next we're gonna have to do is take off this air filter uh, shroud. And there's three five sixteenths here as well. And then between the carburetor and this housing, there is a uh, usually a gasket. And if you can save it, great. And that gasket is, if you have a primer system, that gasket is integral, that it's in good shape. Sometimes I double up on those even if my primer bulb is not working. I have a video on that uh, showing that. You can go ahead and search for that if you like. Now I can get access to my fuel line. Before I do that, I'm just going to put some fuel line pliers to clamp that off first. I'm going to take my clamp off. And this fuel line doesn't look like it's the proper size of fuel line. It looks like it's too big for a diameter, so I'll probably replace that. All right, so pull cord handle is loose now. Fuel tank's off. All right, so let me show you up here. Remember I was saying that this kind of seems a little bit loose and this is where it attaches. There's a 5 16 right here and uh, it does seem a little bit on the loose side. So I'm gonna see if that tightens down or if there's a problem with that. That's five sixteenths. Yeah, it's 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 tight already. So I'm gonna take that off anyways. And down here is where I was talking about the gasket. Is sometimes this gasket is bad 
or o-ring I'm sorry it's an actual o-ring sometimes it's obvious but sometimes not so obvious So uh, I'm going to try and take the o-ring off, see what kind of condition there is, this is. And I'm just kind of looking for sort of deformation. For, I don't see too much. It does look like it's kind of twisted there. You can see a little striation. But what I'll do is uh, I'll flip it the other way, 180 degrees, and then put it back on. See, sometimes it develops a flat spot on on one side. Um, if you turn it around, maybe you can get rid of that, have the flat spot on the other side. And if that doesn't work, I have spare ones of these kicking around, so I can always replace, just replace the whole thing. Next, I'm going to take off the uh, shroud here and see if there's any nests or any kind of how much gunk or how much uh, grass clippings and stuff is, is up and underneath there. So we got one, two, three, four, three eighths. So I got the other three off already. Oh yeah, there we go. Definite nest. And I don't see any inhabitants in there. So they've already been evicted it looks like. But man, oh man, did they do a number here. So that's an imperative that you don't let that stuff stay in there for any length of time because it will overheat your engine. There's a lot of airflow coming off of this flywheel here. Blows past with the shroud on it, blows past the, uh, the engine cylinder here keeps this all cool if this is all clogged up then uh you're, you're gonna overheat the engine and you're gonna burn it up it'll die to seize up on you so very imperative we get this all cleaned up so i'm gonna take a few minutes to go ahead and do that and i'll uh, come back when i'm all done all right so she's all cleaned up blowing out with my air compressor one thing i forgot to mention guys is to uh put your uh, oil dipstick back in just so you prevent any of the debris and stuff falling into the engine block before you blow all this stuff because it uh, gets everywhere as you can imagine so um, the um, next thing I'm going to do is the carburetor now this thing actually did run so the carburetor it didn't have any fuel I had to put some fuel in it so that was a good sign but um, the, so it did run the carburetor is in probably half decent shape but I always take them off anyways and uh, go ahead and clean them out before I get into that one other thing I wanted to mention to you guys is uh, make sure you do a very good inspection of this um, air intake tube it comes in from or the intake tube I guess it's uh, air and fuel gonna goes through the carburetor comes in through here and goes into the engine into the intake right here um, and a lot of times these these are just plastic, so you'll get fine cracks in them. So you want to take a good look at those because if it has any cracks in it, that could be a reason for it to be running lean because it'd be sucking in air uh, in addition to the air and fuel that's already coming in through the carburetor and make it very lean and uh, maybe even to the point where your engine doesn't run. Uh, it's starving for fuel. So the next thing I'm going to do is take care of this carburetor. Uh, so first thing I do is take off this little spring so I always just kind of do it from here just kind of bend this little paper clip side 
and then you can just pull it off like that. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, and then the next thing you gotta do is take off one and two three eighths bolts. And as you would imagine, there is a gasket here as well. And then the carburetor it just comes off easy. It's a Z-bend, so you push it down, turn it 90 degrees, and you maybe spill, spill some fuel there, and then you pull it off that way. So I got my carburetor off now. So the next thing, uh, before I get too far into this, is, is I'm going to try and clean off the outside of this as much as I can. Because uh, I don't want any of this debris and stuff falling into the carburetor when I'm actually taking it apart and making it any dirtier than I need it to be. So I'm going to clean this carburetor, guys. Uh, I do have plenty of uh, videos on how to clean these Briggs carburetors. So I'll, uh, I'll post a link to one for you. And uh, when you're done this uh, video, you can go ahead and look, click the link and go over to that. And you can watch how to clean one of these carburetors. Okay, so I got the nice clean carb put back on. The last thing I'm going to check over is the uh, spark plug. Oh, that wasn't even tight. And uh, it's definitely an older spark. It's an old spark plug. Heart. You know, it's seen better days, but it does still provide spark. So this is just going to be maybe a $80 machine. I'm not going to bother, you know, replacing uh spark plug if it if it works i'll clean it up so that's what i'll do next i'll bring it back uh, i'll gap it and then i'll uh, reinstall it all right here you go guys so nice cleaned up gap spark plug reinstall and after this i'm just going to start putting all the things back together guys and uh, i'll bring you back once everything is good and uh done and see where we're at as far as uh, getting this thing back out and cutting grass. Okay guys, I gotta uh, get this video in before I run out of battery power, but um, I haven't fired it up just yet, but I'll just go through all the stuff that I have done on this machine. Uh, I reversed the O-ring on this guy, put some fresh oil in it, I've lubed the cables, uh, tightened up the exhaust, I uh, straightened out this little guy to make it look a little better. Uh, I've serviced the spark plug, uh, cleaned the carburetor, uh, new fuel cap, uh, taken most of the wobble out of the wheel. It's actually, the wheel is kind of oblong to the, uh, so I'm not going to get that 100% perfect. Uh, I've Put a new blade, a new used blade, and sharpened that up. Uh, lubricated the uh, starter recoil. Cleaned out the fuel tank. Replaced the fuel line with a new used, good used fuel line. And uh, cleaned uh, the bottom side of all the grass cakes. And uh, lubricated all the wheel adjusters. So think that's it <laughs> uh, if I missed anything I do apologize but uh, let's see if we can get this thing fired up I also will be replacing the air filter Shots of primer. All right, guys. So this, uh, it still does smoke a little bit in here. I think there's uh, some residual oil from before, so I'll, I'll let it run for a little while and burn that off. Well, the other thing was I cleaned out the uh, mice, mouse nest under there, and I still need two new handles or uh, knobs for uh, the handle here. But other than that, guys, I think it's a success. It's not a high dollar mower. I'm going to clean it up the best I can. 
and I'll show you before and after once I get that all done. And And depending on how it cleans up, it's probably going to be a $100 mower. So uh, my question to you guys is, uh, do you think it was worth all the work uh, for this free uh, machine to uh, put in the work and effort? I uh, spent $0 on it just because I had all the parts. And uh, I'll probably get 100 bucks out of it for a couple hours of work. So uh, go ahead and leave a comment below whether or not you think it was worth it or not and uh, i value all your comments if you're not a subscriber go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well and you'll be notified uh, if you hit the notification bell each and every week i publish new videos just like this one so uh, once again thanks for joining me guys and uh, take care